Okay, so to start off this week, we have some very, very good news. Do you want to share it with class? Because it's your good news. My good news? Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, well, so... What good news of all of that? Yeah. Um, I had a CT scan last week, um, which I didn't realize until I read the results. They actually just... When you're when you're in treatment for cancer, you get periodic CT scans to see if things are working, if anything else is going wrong or wonky in there. They scan your whole torso so that they can check for a metastasis. They ch like they check all your organs, which I didn't realize, which is very thorough, which is nice. Um, I went in in December with a three centimeter tumor in my right breast. They couldn't find it. Like, I had a meeting with my nurse practitioner before I went for chemo on Friday, and she read me the report, and I was like, all right, but what about the tumor? And she was like, well, they didn't see anything. I'm like, I had a 30-centimeter tumor. It's not, vi and that doesn't mean it's gone. No. It's not It's not visible to the naked eye on the scan. That means um, So, like, working. there are a few people that are like, yeah, it's kicking nice. And a few, but a few people have said, like, oh, so are you done with chemo now? No, because... As I unfortunately learned with my husband, like you could have one cell that you miss and it's still good, you know, and you're back where you started. So I'm still going to finish out my chemo. I have two more weeks left on my current and then I switch to one that's every three weeks. So I only have four treatments, but it's over 12 weeks. Um, But it's working. And, uh, and when is like it there is no visit. There, there is no visible cancer right now. And it hasn't spread, hasn't gone anywhere else. So, and when it's so done, new. surgery and -la -la. gone. Nice. Thank you, cancer. Yay! -la -la. Yeah, that's it's a goal. Yeah. But I also learned, because they're very thorough, that I have scoliosis. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's not funny. It's just the leak. <laughs> the they literally on scan that. you like, they scan you shoulder to hips and just report everything they see, you know? So like they put like I I they when they give you a biopsy they leave little markers in where the where they took their samples, um, partially so that if your tumor shrinks beyond the ability to see it they know where it's to put where they're supposed to be looking, um. But yeah, so they're like, oh yeah, we saw the biopsy markers, this at the other, and you know the scoliosis at the and I'm like the what now? So I got to call my primary care and be like, what do I do about that? Because actually, yeah, I do have lower back and hip pain all the time. I thought I was just old. I love how the fact is you could, you could get, you, you you could like, cancer's gone, but guess what? There's always nine. You know what? I will, I will take that nine trade though. <laughs> In a hot second, I will take that trade. I will take scoliosis. Fine. I'll take scoliosis for a thousand, Alex. Over cancer? Uh, yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, but yeah, that's, uh, so it's working. I am apparently kicking cancer's ass. I'm very happy about that. Yeah, we um, have, uh, it's a great motivator. It's a great motivator to find out it's working, especially like the new chemo they're putting me on is a little scarier. So good to have that motivation going in. Well, with that, that was... And it's, and it's going to be St. Patrick's Day, so I got my shamrocks on. So with that in mind, let, now let's uh, let's deal with the stupid folks, because of course. And now paint. Yes. All right, let's get that intro rolling. I should have had ready before now, but I did. So, come on, damn it! I am so prepared and professional. Hooray! All right, here we go. Yay! Each week, Catherine. Radio Dead Air audience about the worldwide interwebs. Find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck's Wrong? And it's tax season, everyone. We are we are in the midst of between now and next month in America, we uh we do our taxes. There's a lot of things people in other countries don't understand about American taxes. For one, th and this is this will blow American minds a lot. If you live in another country, like say Canada or or uh, the UK. Here's how taxes work. They send you a little card saying this is how much you owe, or this is how much you're giving you back. The end. That's it. You you don't give us homework. Yeah. Oh, we have to do all this shit. And here's the here's the really the really crazy part is. 
the IRS knows how much you've paid in and how much you owe. They already know before you even fill out. It's not like you're telling them anything. They have the W-2s. They have every the 1099s. Everything that people paid you money for, you get like a form for. They sent that to the IRS too. They already know. But you still have to do this estimating shit and send it to them. Like, then you better get it right. Or prison. <sighs> but... Like, you better get it right, or they will burn your life to the ground. As if that wasn't enough, here's another thing about the tax season that uh, people in other countries do not believe, but it's absolutely fucking true. Um, in America, you're taxed for crime. I don't know if I knew that. Your, your crimes are taxed. Yes. Uh, did you steal a car in 2022? How about taking a bribe? If you did, the IRS says you should make sure you report it on your taxes. The requirement can be found in IRS Publication 525, Taxable and Non-Taxable Income, among other missives to report earned income earned from jobs in the gig economy, what to do about taxable alimony payments. If you steal property, this is a quote, you must report its fair market value in your income for the year, unless in the same year you return it to its rightful owner. How about if you receive a bribe? Include it in your income, the IRS says. And if you're dealing illegal drugs or caught up in other illegal activities, in that case, the IRS publication says, jot your earnings on line 8Z, Schedule 1 of the 1040 form, or on Schedule C if you're from your self-employment activity. Self. That feels like entrapment. Kickbacks, side commissions, push money, and other similar payments also go on Schedule 1 or Schedule C. It sounds like, wait a minute, this is a, this is a trap, right? I feel like a large, a large reason people do crime <laughs> is to avoid the taxes. Like, I feel like people steal specifically to avoid taxes. And if you don't, me? if you don't report your crime on your taxes, you could be audited for crime. Like, it's like, it's someone, are they expecting someone, like, a meth addict to have, like, a box of receipts or some shit? Like, I'm hoping this is just their plan for entrapping the stupid, because... <laughs> if they don't know about your crime... Right. ...and you don't report it, mm -hmm. they still don't know. But, here's the thing, if you get caught for that crime later, they could, in theory include an audit because you didn't report your crime on your taxes. Which sounds insane, really not, doesn't it? I'm really not clear on how they can consider stolen property taxable income. We're in a sane country. I I would love to see the written language on that in the tax code. Right? That's fascinating. Megamania says most of this is a holdover from prohibition. Yep. Oh. Our tax code is spaghetti. It's, yeah, it's, nice. it's a giant. Like I was saying, in the UK, you just get a little card that says you owe like $25 or you're getting like $300 back and have a nice day. And you're like, oh, that's nice. And you're done. You're fucking. I haven't done my taxes. I haven't done my taxes yet because I'm trying to figure out how to get a hold of my deceased spouse's W 2. Because the company that handles all his all his company's benefits locked down his account as soon as they got a death certificate. So I emailed them to ask, and they're like, oh, you just have to log into his account. I'm like, cool story. You deleted it. I have the same just, kind of shit just, my dad. just need the W-2. Well, we don't mail W-2s. So you have to get it electronically. I would just genuinely love to do that. Need a little help. Yeah. So yeah, this this is this is America. Very good, Dreador. 
But I, I want to point out, I was surprised this next story wasn't America. Like, really surprised. So, uh, Creed 3 came out. You watch those movies? Yeah. I haven't seen any of the Rocky or the Creed movies. If you're ever curious, just watch Creed. It's really good. It's a good film. Which, like, somebody in the chat is going to be shocked by, and I don't know why at this point. But yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen any of it. If you're, if you're like, I do like Donna. I like Jonathan Majors a lot. He's so not, that he's might not be the first one. He's not the first one. I know. Michael B. Jordan. He's, he's not until the third. Very good. If you ever like downtime and you're like, what should I watch? Creed. It's pretty good. It's a pretty good film. But the reason I'm bringing it up is it's it's premiered in other countries, Creed 3, and um, there's been a bit of LARPing, shall we say. Creed 3 screenings disrupted in France and Germany after isolated brawls break out. Creed 3's immersive fight scenes have been spilling out to the audience in France and Germany with reports of brawls at a number of screenings. French media reported around a dozen separate disturbances in cinemas in France over the weekend and a handful of independent venues have decided to take the film off their schedules. Police were called to an afternoon screaming, screening in the well, screaming, yeah, screening in the Mega Rama Cinema in central French city of Saint Etienne on Saturday after fighting broke out and a security guard suffered a head injury when cans and bottles started to fly. Later that night, the police later that night the police forced 500 people to evacuate from a Canopolis uh, cinema in northeastern town, a uh, French town of Thienville after a mass brawl broke out leading to the cancellation of the screening. In other incidents, a screening in the Metropolis Cinema in the northern town of charville uh, Mezières was also abandoned after two individuals started fighting. Uh, as, as, where else? German media questioned whether the brawls were related to antisocial behavior, some sort of social media campaign or challenge, but this did not appear to be the case even if the footage is some of the, in the incidents has gone viral. What the fuck? What happens in this movie? Well, a fight. Just no yeah, spoilers. Just, see, just seeing a fight doesn't make like. Is it like you remember? <laughs> remember when they did the, when uh the Watchmen TV show? Yeah. The, the new one, which was a masterpiece, by the way. They kept having these brawls in the theaters in black neighborhoods, and it turned out they were using like a mind control ray to make everybody in the theater go insane and kill each other. So you think there's a French mind control ray? Maybe. And it's it's weird because of all the languages, getting angry in French sounds the least threatening, right? I mean, ger I mean German though. Getting pissed off in German. Is like that's a that that will that's like getting your yourself beat up through the ears. But getting pissed off in French is not it's 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 more genteel, I should call it. So I can only imagine what these fights sounded like. Well, in Flemier. Flemier, okay, sure. Wait. Which is a little gross. COVID's still a thing, people. But like what? What's happening in these movies? You can't win the movie. No, I know that. It's I... not. It, it's not a choose your own adventure. <laughs> that that I'm aware of. I mean, maybe it is, but not that not that I've seen. Now, once would be like okay, one thing, but the fact that this has happened literally over a dozen times throughout Europe. And what? you're right, like, not here. Not here! Why, I'm surprised, I'm amazed it didn't happen here. Because we love, like, Americans look for reasons to punch each other in the face. We love that shit. We love, we love just making a fucking spectacle ourselves. Like, even, like, even Canada, I would expect can it happened more likely in Canada than in France. Right? I mean, I don't know, maybe if there's a scene with hockey in it. You have weeks of paid vacation, maternity leave, socialized health care. What the fuck are you angry about? Come on. Who are you? Why are you punching people? You have got it fucking made. I don't know. I mean, the French have that Le Pen chick. 
I'm, pre- I'm I'd be pretty mad about her. Okay, yeah, but still. And I mean, they literally drove Angela Merkel into retirement in Germany. So. Back over here to America. I don't know how I feel about this story. This is sort of one of those good news, bad news sort of things. Um, the good news is, and this has kind of been all over the place, electronic vehicle, I mean, electronic, like electric vehicle um, usage has been on the uptake. People are starting to, to get them more and more. Um, it's just, they're not, they're still not practical for a lot of things. Like, for example, yeah. crime. Georgia thieves busted by cops when they stopped to charge getaway Tesla. I mean, is that a bad thing, though? <laughs> are we calling that a are we calling that a bug and not a feature? <laughs> if crime is harder, <laughs> two Georgia suspects were taken into custody for stealing gaming systems, PlayStation Fives. I could just tell you they were fucking PlayStation Fives. After police locate them charging their getaway vehicle. Gwinnett County North Precinct officers responded to a dispatch call notifying them of a theft in the area. When officers arrived at the scene, they were told that the suspects fled in a Tesla. We got pictures too. There you go. Those that that's I see some PlayStation. Um Dude's test that's not even safe. Teslas are under recall. <laughs> The officers then broadcast the description of the surrounding officers. Suspects were discovered a short way from the scene of the crime, charging their vehicle. Police say officers recovered stolen gaming systems as well as several guns and two pounds of marijuana. Maybe you should have charged the fucker at home first. Here's here's my question. If you can afford a Tesla... Yeah. Why are you stealing gaming systems? Those fuckers are not cheap. Why are you... Well, you're probably stealing, like, PlayStations because you got a Tesla. Gotta pay for that fucker. Yes. (laughs) Two pounds of weed. Gotta pay for that fucking Tesla. Do Teslas not take gas at all? No. They're coldly battery electric power. Okay. Because I know, like, a lot of cars that do both, now, you know, so that if your charge runs out, you run on the gas. Yeah, those are hybrids. These can go, I think, and someone can correct me on this, I think their range is, like, 300 miles, uh, something like 200 to 300 miles per single charge. So, if they... See, that makes me ner- That makes me nervous because they're not ubiquitous enough yet. That, like, I'd be scared of getting stranded somewhere. So, you should probably charge your getaway car before the, you go to the crime. Yeah, because I'm the dumb bitch that drives around for two days on E. <laughs> I can't laugh. I do that in a pickup truck, which is even stupider. I mean, I have a Honda Fit. It needs, like, a drop of gas every three weeks, and it's fine. But if it's cold out, if I'm on E, I'm like, I'll do it tomorrow, and then I'm running late tomorrow, so I don't. And that little car will run on fumes for as long as I need it to. <laughs> but with a battery, I'm fucked. <laughs> So yeah, it's, it's, don't, don't, don't try, if you're going to go for the robbery, fill your tank or charge your fucking car, you dumb shit. All that fucking shit. Yeah. They gotta prepare. They really are pushing the, uh, you know, the cabin space here, if you look at it. Like, damn. I, I'd call that one roomy. And no, under yeah. normal circumstances. Also. Is that a toothbrush? Does the- that's a fucking electric the offset. Like, if you're stealing and fencing gaming systems, doesn't that kind of negate the carbon footprint from the Tesla? A little bit. And the gut. That's an... All right, yeah. let's see. We have, uh... We have so much... God help us if Tesla's become, like, the new cool crime vehicle. Quite often we have people on this show... Do stuff for no discernible reason. Just absolutely baffling. You didn't have to do that. You didn't have to be there. This is from New Hampshire. Red butter. Yeah. New Hampshire man arrested after doing burnout, fleeing police, 
and crashing into a snowbank. And that is a mugshot. A t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't really look like it was much of a bonus, sir. Ah, ha, 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 ha. By that look on your dumbass face. And also, look at that piss off, piss at little truck he's trying to escape the cops in. What the fuck? Is that a lawnmower in the back? That's a lawnmower in the back. Yeah, that's a tiny ass little truck. What the fuck is that? New Hampshire man who police say did a quote burnout in front of a trooper before a wild chase that ended in a crash at Hill, New Hampshire, facing a raft of criminal charges. Trooper monitoring traffic on Route 3A spotted a vehicle go by at 82 miles per hour in a 50 mile per hour zone. Thing cannot go 82 miles an hour. <laughs> I don't believe you. That truck did not get up to 82 miles an hour. Absolutely not. She it's a toy. <laughs> when she tried to stop, the, you, you can look this car up if you want. We have a model here. Tried to stop the 1985 Chevy K10 pickup truck driver later identified as john carter 36 of hill allegedly stopped in the roadway in front of the trooper did a burnout across the width of the roadway and accelerated away again don't believe it you'd flip that thing like a fucking mario kart so essentially this motherfucker just essentially it mooned the fucking cops is what he did this is like flipping them the fuck off only in a road term um I really want to know how he did a burnout in that truck without flipping it. After a chase through multiple roads through Hill, the chase ended when Carter crashed into a snowed bank on Old Town Road and jumped out of the vehicle and ran away. Look, let me tell you something. We've been doing this a very long time. Nothing good ever comes from running from the vehicle. No. I have never seen anyone get away when they ran from the vehicle. And you know why? Because they have vehicles too. Stupid. Gonna take my truck to the old town road. I'm gonna drive till I can't no more. Like, why the fuck in the world would you... I also want to point out, this man is 10 years younger than us. Yep. How? This man is a full decade younger yep. than us and i have cancer yep <laughs> look after yourself folks you gotta you, you got you gotta moisturize people you gotta wear sunblock sunblock you gotta moisturize just it's important why what was the fucking point of this and apparently he has what are the other charges he did arrested on a charge of operating after certification uh, as a habitual offender Reckless conduct with a deadly weapon, possession of controlled substance, dealing with prescription drugs, resisting arrest, reckless operation of motor vehicle, disobeying an operator, operating an unregistered motor vehicle, and a partridge in a pear tree. What the fuck? Why? What, what was the what was the gain from this? It's not like you were showing off for anybody. There's nobody else in the car with you. You're in a fucking 80s pickup he, he truck. You couldn't fit somebody else in the car with you. You're doing 82 in your little tykes. <laughs> this didn't have to happen. Like he wasn't trying like he wasn't trying to get away from the cops in the first place until he went over and pissed on the hornet's nest. That's true, because you didn't even... Nope. It doesn't even... Oh, she tried to stop him. Okay, so she was trying to stop him. Yeah. But... And you just said, you'd be like, fuck you! Speaking of, you decided to make the shit worse. We've got video. It's a short one, but we've got video. Bring this on over here. This is from Minnesota. Louis Hanson. Oh. Lee Carr hates when I do that. Minnesota. Uh, we get you the uh, the link here, or oh, don't you know? Woofta! All right. Uh, here you go. Let's bring that video up here. Watch real carefully. I want to point out only minor injuries here, not life threatening. Here's him chasing a stolen vehicle, a Kia of all things. Down the highway, and you watch here, big flashing lights. 
Wee-hoo, wee-hoo, wee-hoo. And, uh, yeah, the wee-hoo is coming for you, and there we go. Kablam. And here's the best part. They try to run. Like, he, he, he breaks out of the top of it, like, like, I'm free. Who steals a Kia? Um, actually, it's a big problem here in Denver because they're apparently really easy to break into. <laughs> and somebody made a TikTok video. Somebody made a TikTok about how easy they are to break into. And now, like, Kias are getting stolen all over the place. Well, apparently, they're really easy to break out of, too. Oh. Uh... Uh, a police pursuit in Minneapolis Friday morning ended with the suspect vehicle flipping over an overpass bridge landing next to I-94. <clears throat> the Minnesota Department of Transportation traffic cameras showed the moment the teens crashed a Kia through the bridge after speeding up an exit ramp, flipping over the side before landing right side up along I-94. I- I- sorry. Moments later, both c- suspects are seen on traffic cameras hopping out of the vehicle with one of the youths climbing, climbing through a broken windshield. They were caught by police soon after, both suffering non-life-threatening injuries in the crash. Vehicles determined to be stolen. Uh, Kia was... Uh, just... What were you going to do here? Yeah. It was stolen... What was, what was the plan? Like, if you... If you... If your options are to flee the police in a Kia, give up. Give up. I was like, is it work like in a Kia or on foot? <laughs> they tried both. Neither worked. It's like, damn. But what, what, what the fuck? What were you the fuck, man? In a Kia. At that point. At that point, you should just be like, you know what? I I understand that I am lucky to not be a puddle of gelatinous goo. Just take me away. Yeah, seriously. Like, what are we going to do? I'll, I'll just go to the doctor later. I'll be fine. I'll take an aspirin. I've... You, you are lucky to still be person-shaped. And you should just quit while you're behind. Right. Airbags work, by the way. <clears throat> Like, Jesus, the fact that they both were like, fuck, let's get out of here. Jesus Christ, buckle up, kids. It's important. I mean, you still were, you still won't be able to get away from the cops, but you want to buckle up. Get a key. You might keep your organs. Yeah, it's just ease of theft, I think, with the key is, like I said. What are you in for? I stole the key. <laughs> that's, that's not going to go down real well. Like, you, what, you ain't baby driver. What the fuck are you trying to pull off here? It's a Kia. See, as much as I make fun of my car, my car is its own anti-theft device. <laughs> yeah. Nobody nobody wants that tiny motherfucker. Nobody wants to have to turn the giant, ridiculous toy key on the back of it to get it going. My truck is from 2004. No one is going to steal that son of a bitch. No one's even going to think about They're like, ah, fuck this one. Like my job, we have to street park, and people worry all the time about their cars getting broken into, and I'm like, not me. Like, also, my car is always full of trash. I, my car always looks like shit, so. I even made my car less valuable because I took out the vintage stereo system that had the cassette tape and the CD, and I put in a, blue, like, a really cheap Bluetooth receiver in there. It's like, I ain't stealing that shit. Fuck that. Like, yeah. it's it's literally a $25 Bluetooth receiver. That's all the fuck I need. Nobody's stealing that shit. I just have, I just plug in my USB, there's the USB to my phone. Uh, my, my old, my Honestly, old... lived here for three years. You put a gun to my head. I couldn't name a single radio station. That's not true. I can name the local NPR station. <laughs> Now my my like you put a gun to my head and like what's the Denver rock station, dude? I don't fucking know. I I just listen to music off my phone anymore. Like that 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 my my old stereo didn't even have an aux input. You know, I had to use one of those cassette adapter things. Yep. 
Oh, yeah. Those ancient fucking things. I was like, you know what? I'm tired of this. I'm just going to use the Bluetooth from now on. It would skip horribly if you hit a bump. I've got, I can either use the Bluetooth or I've got, I now I have an auxiliary input at last. All right, last one this week. My car is at least, my car is at least, my car is at least new enough that it does have the aux input in the glove. It came with that. You know, when y'all went and you got, you did the whole uh, eloping to, to Hawaii thing, I think y'all had the right of it because this next fucking story, Jesus Christ. We got video. And again, it's a short video, but uh, holy shit. Let's bring this up over here. Uh, where is it? Oh, no. Yes, oh, no. Where is that video? I had it. There it is. Hey, I love how you just went, oh, no. That is, in fact, a gun you're seeing waved around at the wedding. And you're like, what? Was that the wedding guest? No. That was the venue owner. Wow. <clears throat> Footage shows the wedding venue's owner, 58-year-old Miguel Rodriguez uh, Albis Albisu. Albisu. That's it. Miguel Rodriguez Albisu wheeling a revolver in the middle of the reception. Incident happened just over 11 p.m. on March 2nd at the uh, Cielo Farms wedding venue in Southwest Ranches. But it shows the venue. Don't go there. But it shows the venue's owner, 58 year old Miguel Rodriguez Albisu, wheeling a revolver in the middle of the reception. Get out, get out, can be heard yelling in the video. The, actually, they're being generous here. Get the fuck out, was being yelled in the video. For new arrest reports released Monday, it was uh, Rodriguez Albisu's son, 31-year-old Christian Rafart, who first approached the wedding's DJ, telling him the guests need to leave in about 30 minutes before the end time on the contract. Rafart is then accused of punching and pushing two women. Whoa! This is this is the part of the, of the story that just, I, 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 I broke up laughing. I couldn't help it. Jonathan Campo, also known as DJ Rich Homie John, Honey. <laughs> Said he was that's the saddest <laughs> that's the saddest, whitest DJ name I have ever heard in my life. Said he was DJing his cousin's wedding when the disturbance began. You know this dude actually said to the reporter, I'll give you a statement, but you gotta talk you gotta put in there that I am DJ Rich Homie John. Yeah. You gotta plug my my business. You gotta put that in there for me. I am DJ Rich Homie John. That's... Who the fuck is using homie? I haven't heard anyone call anybody homie in 20 years. 30 years. Let's like live living color calling somebody a homie. What the fuck? Quote, I'm just staring down the barrel. I'm just like staring down the barrel of the gun like and just trying to brace myself to get shot because I really don't know what your intent is, he said. And like... Why am I in this situation? Have you seen the movie version of Zola? No. Zola, there was a viral Twitter thread years ago about... It, it, the beginning is, let me tell y'all how me and this bitch fell out. And it's just this crazy story about this ridiculous weekend. And they made a movie. And the movie's actually quite good. There's a character's boyfriend... In that movie that's played by, like, the tall idiot from Succession, that's that guy. <laughs> a long walk when you don't know what I'm talking about. But if you have seen the movie Zola, just picture Nicholas Braun in his little sideways cap. That's that guy. Raffert was arrested on charges including battery, resisting arrest, and violating probation. Oh, nice. That, that's lovely. Um, Rodriguez Abisu was, uh, Abisu, sorry, was arrested on nine counts of aggravated assault. And you're sitting there going, how is it nine counts? Because you pointed the gun at nine people. That that's how. And here it gets even better. This is just this is wild. This is a story. The attorney rec representing Rodriguez Abisu said, "What happened before the video will be crucial when trying the case in court." Quote: 
when the evidence comes out in this case about what happened before the tape was rolling, I believe it's going to show that my client is in fact not guilty, attorney Kenneth Hadowitz said. Now, all right, props to your bullshit skills, my man. Because that's some quality bullshit. That is some vintage, that is, that is some artisanal bullshit you just laid down. But I think you're going to find out that unless they were like holding him at, at like, they, unless everybody in the wedding had AKs pointed at this guy. Yeah. I don't think you're going to get out of the aggravated assault chart for waving a fucking gun in a wedding. But look, I know it's your place. Right. They, they paid you money to rent it. Right. You don't get to use a gun on people. No. That's not good customer I'm like, service. I'm very interested to find out what drove it to this point, but I sincerely doubt it's going to negate the fact that you decided to just pull a gun on everybody. Well, the fact that before we even got to the gun, his son, who was on probation, started punching right. women at a wedding. Who the fuck does that? We, uh... My my first wedding, I did the whole big wedding thing. Right. And I'm not going to tell you not to do that. Live your best life. I, I don't regret it, but I wasn't keen to do it a second time because it's a lot of work and it's a lot of drama. Yeah. The DJ we hired was telling us, I don't even know how we got around to this, but the only wedding he ever walked out of early and without final payment was the one that ended with the groom knocking out the bride with the cake topper. Please tell me it was an accident. No. Okay, that's that's not good. That's, that's not good. And somebody walked over and just like said to him, like, you should pack up. And he was like, absolutely. And he was out of there. Weddings make people insane, dude. Insane. Except, you know, normally the people in the wedding. Yeah. Not the venue owner. No. We were just at Luke's wedding and... It was lovely. It was this nice vineyard place. It looked like fucking, fucking Middle Earth, the fucking Hobbit Shire and shit. You know, we had we had fucking s'mores and shit. It was great. It was nice. I could not imagine that. You know, somewhere at around eleven, that nice little lady be coming out. Okay, everybody, it's time to go. Let's let's move your asses. Get it out yeah. of here. Move it along. I couldn't imagine that. Shit the fuck so yeah that's and like the end of the wedding usually is very unglamorous because they need to turn the room over for the next event right so like if your wedding ends at 12 at like 11 50 not like after the cake is served like honestly you might see them start running around pulling tablecloths off of shit you know because they gotta turn that room over and they're just like what I didn't know when I had my big wedding is you only get the limo for the first half of the day, and I had to stuff my big old dress into my brand new husband Saturn. The end of the wedding is very not glamorous, but usually it doesn't involve you know gunplay. I mean, they gave us sparklers. Oh, that's that was, nice. Was, yeah, like the sparklers when they were coming out. Yeah, we didn't. We didn't yeah. have get the fuck out. You know, if you're pulling it. The first thing we learned this week, if you're pulling a pork chop sandwiches on everybody to get them the fuck out at the end of Which, everything. And, you know, they were in Missouri. I would expect that more in Missouri than Florida. Yeah. Well, okay, Florida, everything's going wrong in Florida, right? <laughs> Every True. Day. Yeah, it, th there are ways to motivate people to leave. Revolvers are not one of them. Just close the bar. We've learned that trying to pull a Dukes of Hazard in a goddamn Kia is not going to go well for you, son. Um. Hey, Valkyrie. You want to be on the show? No, thank you. Okay. We've learned it. She's hi. Antagonizing the cops in your 1985 Chevy truck. That's, that, that's not going to go well for you. You're fucking driving a Scooty Puff Jr., for Christ's sake. <laughs> it's a toy. Um, we have learned that maybe if you're if you're going to start doing crime in an environmentally conscious vehicle, charge the fucker first. 
and maybe do environmentally conscious crime. I'm just saying. We've learned that sports films do not require audience participation, especially the boxing movies. Yeah. And finally, we've learned carefully document your ill-gotten gains or the IRS will fucking come after you. We are an insane country. It's how they got Capone. And they still have... That was a hundred years... That was literally almost a hundred years ago, Tara. Maybe that's why they haven't changed it. They're like, hey, that's how we got Capone. Fuck it. And Purdy killed anybody when we got the drugs. That's just... You know, people that sitting there, if you're like anyone in any other country right now is watching this right now, going, Jesus Christ, I thought our taxes were bad. We live in an insane place. We are in the crazy place. Don't come here. It's bad for you. Mm. 